Hi everyone. My name is Rebecca. I'm the Digital Experience Coordinator at the West Vancouver Memorial Library uh, from the Technology Department and I'll be taking you through today's lesson, iPad Essentials Getting Started. So whether you're brand brand new to iPads and you've never used one ever before um, or you own an iPad and you're quite comfortable with it and wanting to learn more, um, this class should have takeaways for everyone, um, some new tips and tricks, no matter how much experience you have or don't have um, or what your background is with iPad so far. So today we're going to be going over uh, how to navigate an iPad. So getting to know um, the buttons and how to switch between windows and apps and um, sort of manually physically use the iPad. Um, also go into changing your settings so you can customize them to be best for you. Uh, we'll go into connecting the Wi-Fi and using the internet. Um, also go over apps, so uh, what apps are, uh, downloading new apps, uh, deleting apps, moving apps around so that you can organize things and make things look uh, less cluttered, however you like. We'll try to touch um, briefly on photos if there is time. Um, and then we'll definitely talk about storage um, and iCloud. I think we get more questions around storage than anything else with iPads. So um, we definitely want to make sure to cover that. Um, so iPads, they have tons and tons of different features. Um, and what we're going to be doing for this lesson is focusing on, like the title says, the essentials um, or the key features um, so that we can build a solid foundation for you. Um, and then there are links and there's more information on the handout that accompanies this lesson. Um, so then that can build on this and take you further. So for example, um, with changing settings, I'm going to demonstrate how to change one or two settings. The idea being that once you know how to change one setting, um, then you have the foundation and the understanding to change other settings as well. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now so that my video is bigger and uh, you can see me demonstrating on the iPad. Um, I'll just get that ready. Uh, here we go. Okay, so I've got my iPad here for, for demonstrating. Um, so in getting to know the iPad, the, the first thing to really get to know are the three different buttons. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about the buttons as though I'm looking at the screen. So when I say something like on the top right, um, that I mean while looking at the screen, the top right while I'm looking at the screen. So the, the first button is that one in the top right. Um, so this one up here, and this button has two different functions. The first function is that um, you can press on it and hold, and it will fully power off the iPad or turn it back on again when it's been fully powered off. So fully powering off your iPad means that it will shut down all windows, all apps, anything that was open, and it will completely turn your iPad off so it's also not using any battery as well. So that's just fully 100% powering off. Um, the other thing you can do is you can just press on the top button here. And when you just press on that top button without holding it down, then what you're doing is putting your iPad to sleep. So putting your iPad to sleep um, means that when you wake it up, uh, all of the apps and windows that you had open will still be open. Um, but when it's asleep, then the screen is black, like mine's asleep right now. So the screen's black and it's in what we call low power mode. Um, so that means that it's still using a little bit of battery, um, but it's really saving on the battery usage. So it's, um, it's always a good idea to put your iPad to sleep when you're not using it. So again, this top right button, we would press and hold to fully power off, and then we would just tap it once um, to put it to sleep or wake it up. So I'll just demo that now. So I just do one tap, and then I've woken it up, and one tap again, and then I've put it to sleep. Um, so the next buttons I wanna cover are the volume buttons, and they're actually divided in, in two sections. So sort of count it as one button, even though they feel a little bit like two. Um, so those are on the top right on the side. Um, so this top button here, um, that's to make the volume go up. And then this button here is to make the volume go down. 
and you can just keep pressing it down to mute your iPad. Um, some iPads, some older ones, may have uh, another button on top of the volume buttons here. Um, that's a little switch button that you primarily use to mute your iPad or put the sound back on. Um, I believe iPads are no longer made with this button and it was only a few models that came out with it. Um, but just something to be aware of that if your iPad has a little button above there, then uh, that's just a mute unmute button. That's its main purpose. And then the third button uh, that iPads generally have, and I would say kind of the most important one, is what we call the home button. So when you're looking at the screen and you look to the bottom in the middle, it's this but a white round button there. And that's the home button. And it's called the home button because it will take you back to your home screen. Um, I'll cover what the home screen is uh, in more detail soon. And that takes you back to your home screen. So if you're in an app, um, if you're in any sort of window and you wanna get out, you just tap on that and you will be taken back home. Um, you can also use this button to wake up your iPad too. So if your iPad's asleep, you can press on it, and then you would uh, press on it one more time, and then you're in your iPad. If you have a passcode set up, um, after you press that button the second time, then it'll ask you to enter your passcode um, or go through the touch or face ID. Um, we always recommend setting up a passcode for your iPad for security reasons, but if you don't have a passcode set up and your iPad is asleep, again, you just press twice on there, and then you're in. Um, I'll just point out while we're here too, just to help orient you as well. Um, so on the bottom here, sort of under the home button, this is your charging port. So this is where you would plug in the cord to charge your iPad. Always better to charge your iPad by plugging it into a wall. You can technically do it by plugging it into something like your computer, but it will take quite a bit longer um, quite a bit longer to charge up than if it's plugged directly into the wall. Also the cameras. Um, iPads have two cameras. There's one camera on the back here. That's sort of the main camera that if you're looking at the screen, then the camera is pointing this way. Um, the second camera is this one here. Um, so this is the camera that you would use to take a selfie. So if you're looking at the screen um, and you see yourself on it when you're in the camera app, then it's this camera that's being used. Um, and in the handout, I, there's a little bit more detail on how you switch between the two cameras, but I just think it's really helpful to know that um, for taking selfies as opposed to taking normal photos, um, they are two separate cameras. Um, and then it's good to know, especially where the camera is on the back here, um, because sometimes I know when you're taking a photo, you might not realize it's there. Um, I think we tend to take photos as if we think the camera's here. Um, and then that sort of messes up the orientation a bit or, or maybe we get our hands in the way. So it's, it's just good to be aware um, where it is there. Um, all right, and then um, this iPad, it's got its headphone jack in the top left here. Um, so that is where I would plug headphones in. Uh, there are, um, the, the two latest iPad Pros, I believe, do not have a headphone jack, similar to how the uh, newer um, iPhones don't have a headphone jack, um, but that's just if you have the new, latest, fanciest iPad, all the other ones do still have the headphone jack. Okay, um, so that is an orientation to the different buttons and sort of the, the physicality of the iPad. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Go into the iPad um, and share my screen with you so that you can also see what I'm doing. That's just going to take me one second to set up. Okay. Okay. So now um, you can see my iPad screen and you should still be able to see my little video up here as well because um, I might hold up to show you the, the sort of motions that I'm doing with my hands to get to certain places as well. 
So I'm in my iPad and I'm at what we call the home screen. Um, the home screen will look a little different for everyone because it depends how you have it set up, um, but it's, it's essentially all kind of the same. There's some sort of photograph or image um, in the background. And then these square icons that we call apps. The word app is short for application, and that just means a program. So each of these little square icons represents a program that I can use to do something specific on my iPad. So the photos one, that's a program that I use to store all the photos I take. Um, Google Maps, that's the app, that's the program I use for wayfinding, and so on. Um, so you, you can use apps to access your email, write notes, read ebooks, message friends. There's an app for literally everything you could imagine and everything you can't even imagine. Um, we'll go over those in more detail later, um, but just wanted you to know that, that that is what those square icons represent. Um, so anytime my iPad has been asleep, as I mentioned, um, when I open a new app, which I, I can open an app anytime just by um, putting my finger on, directly on the square icon that I want to open. So I want to open my internet browser, Safari. And then you'll see that um, I am open, open my internet browser and it automatically opens to the last page or the last window that I was on within that app. If my iPad had been fully powered off, and then I fully powered on my iPad and then opened my internet browser, it would be, um, it, it wouldn't go to what I had last looked at. It would be, a, a, you know, just the, the home page of that app. Um, so sometimes that can be a little confusing um, for people I find. So um, that's just good to know that anytime you're opening an app uh, and your iPad hasn't been, been fully powered off, it's going to show you what you were last looking at on that app. So to get back to the home screen at any point, um, all I have to do is again, just press on that home button here if I want to get out of this app. And now I'm back on the home screen. It doesn't matter where I am on my iPad, I just press that home button in the bottom in the middle here, and then I'm back to the home screen. Uh, so you can have many apps and windows open at once, even though it doesn't look like it. Like right now, it doesn't look like I have any apps open. I'm just on my home screen, but I have a lot of apps and windows that are open. And the way that I can tell is if I go from the very, very, very bottom of my iPad and take a finger and just slide it up. And when I do that, then it shows me the windows of every single app that I have open. So sometimes we'll get questions from people around, you know, how do I close my windows? And I heard that having lots of apps and windows open um, will make it so that my iPad doesn't function as well. Apple has formally stated that they feel like there's no need to close any of these windows um, unless you found that an app has stopped working. So for example, um, if I found that my camera app, app was being a little bit funny, um, then I would do just like I did before, I take my finger in the very bottom here and, and slide it up. And then I can see the camera app open in all these windows. And then from there, I would take my finger and sort of flick up on the screen to fully close that camera app in case it's being buggy. But in general, it doesn't really matter having these, um, all these apps open at once. Um, I, I wouldn't really worry about it or spend too much time worrying about it. It's just kind of uh, a nice feature to know how to use. So again, um, if I want to get out of here, press that home button. OK. That's sort of navigating the home screen and getting from app to app and then fully closing apps. Um, of course, again, if you fully power your iPad off, it will also um, close all of the apps that you have open as well. So now what I'd like to do 
is go over settings and how you change those. So your settings app, if you look on the bottom of my screen, it's next to the clock there. It looks like a set of gears. Um, it has a little number two on it. And anytime you see a little number in red um, on an app like that, um, it's just telling you that you have some sort of alerts or notices. So if I tap on the settings app there, um, it's just telling me I have some suggestions for my Apple ID and saying that I need to um, you know, log into some things. And it's also su suggesting that I sign up for two-factor authentication. I'm not going to go into that right now. I just wanted to let you know what it means um, when you have those little number notifications on an app. So to customize your settings, again, you tap on that settings app. And then in the settings app, there are two columns. So the column on the left is where I would scroll to select the setting that I want to modify. And then the column on the right is where I make the actual changes. So I'm just going to demonstrate finding and changing one setting, which, like I said, that will then help you know um, how to change any setting, really. Uh, and on the handout, we go into more detail of some recommended settings um, to look at and, and to make changes to. So. The setting that I want to look at right now is called the Control Center. So I've opened the settings app by tapping on it from my home screen. And I'm going to scroll down on the left. And I'm, I'm scrolling uh, just by, oh, make sure you can see that screen. Um, I'm scrolling just by moving my finger on the screen like this. And there I can see under General is Control Center. So I tap on Control Center. And then uh, from here on the right, I can then go ahead and make some changes. So I'll just go ahead and explain what the Control Center is before we make the changes. The Control Center, this is something really, really useful that even though I've been um, an Apple user for years, I didn't fully understand until recently. So if I drag my finger from the top right on the screen, that's how I get my control center up. So the control center is basically a way to really quickly access very important settings or features. So in my control center, you can kind of see offhand, that's how I can very quickly um, look for Wi-Fi or connect to Wi-Fi. Um, I can also um, click on airplane mode. Um, I can change the brightness. Oops, sorry, let me. That's not wanting to cooperate with me right now. Maybe I'll change the volume. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'll change the volume instead. That's working a little bit better for me. Um, so there we go. Um, so it, yeah, it's just a way that I, I can quickly access things. I find it's, it's very, very useful. Um, and it's much easier than sort of doing things the long way. And you can customize this control center to, to you. So, um, and I'll just show you too how I, how I got out of there. So I was in the control screen there. And then I don't have to press on the home button. All I would do is just tap once on the screen. And then I'm back to the control center there. Because um, I could kind of see it. I could kind of still see the control center in the background. So then I just need to tap there to have it come to the forefront again. So at the control center, um, I have access within apps turned on because I want to be able to access the control center anytime I'm anywhere on my iPad. Um, and then I'll tap on customize controls. And then from here, I can see all of the controls that I can take away or add to the control center. Um, there's sort of a limited number of options of things that you can do in there. So under include, you can see that I already have timer, camera, and screen recording in there. And then there are lots more controls here with the, the green circle plus sign um, that I've chosen to not have in my control center, but I would just tap on the plus sign to put it in there if I wanted it in there. So maybe I want to have text size in there. So then now when I go to my control center, I can see the two A's. 
And if I tap on that, then I have the ability to change. You could kind of see it a bit in the background there. I have the ability to change the text size on my screen. Um, so that's something that could be really helpful. Um, in the handout, there's a list of all the different control center options and what they do. Um, we sadly don't have time to go through every single one of them, even though I wish we did. Um, okay, just making sure I covered everything. Okay, um, so that's generally how to change a setting. I will go over one more setting while we're here, because next I want to talk about connecting to the internet. Um, so there's two different ways that you can connect to the internet. Um, generally, once you've set up a password protected internet network on your iPad, your iPad will always recognize that um, internet network and you won't have to manually connect to it again. So for example, um, under Wi-Fi there, you can see my home Wi-Fi name, free public waifu. Um, we picked kind of a silly name <laughs> for our home Wi-Fi. Um, it is not actually free or public, it is password protected, which we always recommend. So um, anytime I have this iPad in my house, I don't have to connect to the Wi-Fi. It's, it's always going to automatically remember because it's password protected. Um, and if you're connecting to a public Wi-Fi network, generally you're going to have to manually do that. Um, you know, like every time you come to the library, um, you will have to go into your settings and then tap Wi-Fi, search for the available networks, and then tap on the name of the network that you want to connect to. So that's one way to connect to internet if you're needing to connect to internet. So again, I would tap on that settings um, app that looks like the gears and then tap on Wi-Fi there, and then tap on the name of the network. And um, this is probably a neighbor of mine, so I, I don't actually know their password, but just for demo purposes, um, if it's password protected, it'll have a little lock um, icon next to the, the Wi-Fi symbol. And then when I tap on it, it would ask me to enter the password and I would need the password to join. Um, I don't have any publicly available networks um, in my neighborhood. Um, and if I did, then it would just show up without the lock on it and I would click on it um, and then connect from there. So that's one way to connect to Wi-Fi. The other way you can connect to Wi-Fi is from the control center. So again, I would swipe down from the top right there and then you see the little Wi-Fi symbol there, which is that, um, that little triangle underneath the airplane. So I would tap on that and that's a way that I can sort of quickly try and connect to Wi-Fi as well. So um, you will need to have internet already installed in your home um, or be somewhere where there is public internet in order to connect to the internet. If you're at home and you don't have internet installed in your home, um, you can always contact us and we can um, see about helping connect you um, to some low cost options. Um, but you will need to have internet set up in your, in your home through an internet service provider such as um, TELUS or Shaw or Rogers um, in order to use the internet on your iPad at home. Um, and there are certain apps that do require that you have access to the internet. Um, some apps, things like uh, using the clock, camera, photos, um, files, these types of apps, you, you don't need to be connected to the internet. But I'd say that the majority of apps, um, you do need to be connected to the internet to use them. So I'm already connected to the internet. So if I'm wanting to actually browse the internet, then I need to use what we call an internet browser. Um, and the default internet browser on Apple products is Safari. And Safari, it looks like the blue compass. Um, it's just at the bottom of my screen. You can see it there. So if I want to browse the internet, I'm just going to tap it. Um, and again, like I said, um, it's going to default because I haven't fully powered off my iPad in a while and I haven't closed Windows in a while. It's going to default to going to the last page that I had open. And the last page that I had open 
was um, the the page that I linked to in the handout about the the different kinds of settings and features that you can have in the control center and, and what they are. So um, I'm just going to demo though what it looks like if I hadn't had any windows open. Okay, so let's say I had no, um, you know, I, I've just fully powered on my iPad and then I tap on Safari and I open up Safari, then it's going to look like this. Yours might look a little bit different depending on what your favorites are and what your frequently visited sites are. Um, I will go over changing your favorites in just a moment. So um, to use the internet, it's, it's pretty similar to how you would do it on a computer. So on your iPad here, um, what you would want to do is tap your finger in the top where there's the magnifying glass and it says search or enter website name. So I'll just try and demo here. Sorry, there's kind of a glare from my window. So just tap my finger there and then the keyboard comes up. So the keyboard comes up and then from here, I can either type in the URL of where I want to go. So let's say I want to go to westvancouver.ca and often the internet browser will try and guess where you're trying to go. So in this case, I want to go to westvancouver.ca. I've typed in part of the, the URL address. Um, I don't have to type it all the way in because it knows where I want to go. So then I would just hit the, the blue go button. And then here I am um, on the westvancouver.ca website. So let's say I didn't want to go to westvancouver.ca and I actually wanted to go to the West Van Library website. So I think like, oops, I, I made a mistake. I clicked on this one I didn't mean to, or I'm done with westvancouver.ca and want to go to a new site. Then again, I can just tap in that area that we call the address bar where it says westvancouver.ca. So I just tap on there. And then this time I'll do it by search terms. Um, maybe I don't know the URL or the address of the website. I just know I want to go to West Van Library. So then I hit go. And then it does a Google search for me. And the first result is the West Vancouver Memorial Library homepage. So then I can just tap where it says that title there, West Vancouver Memorial Library homepage. So I tap there. And here I am on the West Van Library site. Now let's say I have the West Van Library site up and I also want to have the westvancouver.ca site up, um, but I don't want to close westvanlibrary.ca. So now what I can do is if you look in the top right of my screen, there's a blue plus sign sort of underneath where the Wi-Fi symbol is. I can press that blue plus sign and then what I've done is opened up a new tab. So within one Safari internet browser window, now I have two tabs. And I can tap on that address bar there and go to westvancouver.ca. So now I've got both websites open at once. If I want to get back to West Vancouver Memorial Library site, then I'll tap. I'll, I'll just tap where it says homepage West Vancouver Memorial Library and there I am there and then same thing I would tap where it says District of West Vancouver to go back there. Now if I want to close one of these let's say I'm, I'm done with westvancouver.ca there's that little X sort of in the middle at the top um, where that tab is so I would just tap on that X and then I've closed that tab. Now, we get questions a lot about the difference between a tab and a window. Um, tabs and windows of internet browsers function the same way. Um, you can have many tabs open within a window. You know, I can keep looking on that plus sign. And then now I've got four different tabs open. If I would prefer to have a different window, um, in the very, very top right, there's the two blue squares on top of each other. I can tap on that, and then I see all of the windows that I have open. So windows, you can kind of think like pages. So I have four Safari windows or pages open. 
And then on one of the windows, I have four tabs open. So it's just kind of personal preference. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close some of these windows by tapping on the X there. And then now I've just got one window open. That's it. And then I'm going to click that plus sign to open another tab. So that's kind of different tabs and windows. Um, it's good to know about windows because sometimes, you know, maybe you've opened a link from a text message or an email, and that will always open up in a new window. So maybe I had westbandlibrary.ca open, and then I went to my email and then clicked on a link and it opened a new window. And then I don't know how to get back to that other window I had open. So it's always good to know about those little two squares at the top. Click on those, and then you'll likely find um, whatever web page you, you sort of lost and, and were looking for again. Um, some other cool features of Safari um, I just want to go through now. Um, I'm going to go through first sharing and saving. So we've gone over in the top right what the two squares on top of each other are. That's to see all your windows. The plus sign is to open a new tab within Windows. And then the one, the square with the arrow pointing up, that's got some different features there. So um, there's a lot of different options. I'm just gonna go over a few right now that I think are the most important. The first one is the copy. So if I press copy, then what that's done is it's copied the URL or the address of the web page that I'm currently on. So then it's copied www.westbandlibrary.ca. Then I could paste that URL into an email or a text message um, if I want to share that with someone. So that's the copy feature. I personally find that really helpful. I use that for um, copying URLs and pasting them into messages to people all the time. Um, add to reading list is fairly straightforward. You're adding that web page you're on to a reading list um, that you can go through and read later. Um, adding a bookmark, same thing. You're, you're sort of saving that website for later. Add to favorites is um, a feature that I really appreciate. So I'm going to demonstrate this by, I'm going to click add to favorites. And here I can choose to leave the website name as is, um, or I can modify to something that's easier for me. Um, so I've made the title of this West Bend Library, Memorial Library, I'm gonna click save. So now when I open a new tab on Safari or a new window, or I'm opening the app after fully powering off, now, um, it, it will always open to my favorite screen. And here, now I can see that West Vancouver Memorial Library um, is one of the favorites. Although I realize now I already had it on my favorites <laughs> as well as the West Vancouver site. Um, so now it's in my favorites twice. So I've accidentally put it in my favorites twice. So I'll just show you now how to fix, fix that because I don't want to bother having, having it twice on my favorites. So um, in this case, then I'll direct you to sort of around the top left there. There's a book icon. So if I click on that, I can see if it's on the watch or clock icon that shows me all of my history, all the different web pages I've looked at. I can swipe to the left if I want to delete something within my history. You can also search my history too. I would click on the um, glasses icon if I'm wanting to see my reading list. I haven't saved anything on my reading list, so there's nothing there. But if I had, that's where it would be. And then I can tap on the book icon, and that shows me uh, my favorites. So same as like deleting the history. Um, <clears throat> I can see I have two West Vancouver Memorial Library pages, so I'll just pick one of them and sort of swipe to the left, and then that deletes one of them for me. Um, oh, I think I accidentally deleted West Vancouver. 
Oh, no, wait, I had it on there three times. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I had it on there three times. I'm going to delete another one. And there you can see the changes. Um, and you know what? I tend to not use Yahoo. I tend to not use Bing. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to delete those two. And then I'll um, just tap that back button where it says bookmarks up there and tap the book icon up top and then i'm just back and i have sort of a cleaner tidied up favorites page um another couple things i'll go over really quick um just at the very very top left there there are the backwards and forwards buttons so let's say i'm, I'm navigating the west vancouver memorial library site um maybe i click on a page and I realized, oh, I actually didn't want to click on this page. I meant to go to read, listen, and view instead. So then I can tap um, that back button in the very top and then go back to where I was. Or if I've decided, no, I actually do um, want to go to visit, I'll just click the forward button there. And that takes me back to where I was too. Um, one last feature I'll show with Safari uh, and using using Safari for browsing the web. Um, I'm going to go back to the top right where there's that square with the up arrow. One feature that I find um, really quite neat is this add to home screen. It's where there's the box with the plus sign. So let's say, you know, I'm using the West Vancouver library site so much. I want to have it saved to my home screen. Gonna make sure that URL is right. Yeah, I'm gonna tap in the top right where there's the box with the upward facing arrow. And then I'm gonna tap on add to home screen. And then I can double check that the URL is the right URL and then I'll click add. And then um, you'll see next to PowerPoint there, it has added the West Vancouver Memorial Library homepage as a shortcut on my home screen. So anytime I tap on that, it automatically opens Safari and opens to the West Vancouver Memorial Library homepage there. So you can do that for any, any website you want within Safari. Um, I was gonna tap on that home button to get out and go back to the first screen on my home screen. You can download other internet browsers to use if you prefer other ones. Um, so you can see in the top left there, I have a folder called internet browsers. So there I have Safari, our default um, internet browser app, as well as Google Chrome. Sometimes I prefer using Google Chrome as a browser, um, but it's not possible to delete Safari uh, because it is the default built-in app. Um, and so you'll, you'll always need to use Safari to some degree. Um, and then you can choose to download something like Google Chrome or Firefox um, for, for other browsing if you want to. Um, like for example, on my iPhone, I use Firefox all the time um, as the, the internet browser to use the, the internet um, and go to different web pages, but I still keep Safari on the front of my homepage because like I said, anytime I'm opening a link from an email or a message, um, then it's gonna open up Safari since that's the default browser. You also won't be able to do certain features like um, saving a website to your home screen um, on other internet browsers. That's a feature that you can only do with Safari because it is the built-in app. Okay. So speaking of apps, getting more into it, um, like I said, app is short for application um, and you will need to be connected to the internet to use some apps. Um, I would say to use um, the majority of apps. Um, and there are apps for all sorts of things. Um, yeah, you can, you can literally find an app on any topic. Um, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of apps. Uh, we've recommended some apps in the handout. And what I want to go over first is what we call built-in apps. So um, any Apple device 
um, an iPad or an iPhone, comes with um, built-in apps. So some of these apps you can delete, um, some of them you cannot delete. So for example, Safari is a built-in app and you can't delete it. Um, the settings app is a built-in app that you can't delete. That's because you're, um, you're always going to need your settings app to be able to change settings. There are other apps that are built in that you can delete. Um, so for example, Apple has their own Maps app that is always a built-in app. Um, I'm not crazy about that app. I don't think it works very well. So anytime I'm working with a new iPad or new iPhone, it's one of the first things that I delete because <laughs> I just don't really like it. And instead what I'll do is download Google Maps because I think Google Maps is a much better app than the built-in Apple app. So um, I sent a link in the handout. Um, and in the handout, the, the link shows you, I think, the, the built-in apps that you can, uh, you can delete. Um, unfortunately, there's no comprehensive list of all the built-in apps and what they do. Um, I was really, really hoping to find one or even to put one together myself, but um, that proved to be virtually impossible. <laughs> so um, the best way to figure out what an app does, if you're not sure, I would say is to Google. Um, so for example, if you see the Apple Wallet app, which is a built-in app, I would Google Apple Wallet app um, and then read more about it to see what it does. Okay. So on the handout, we've recommended just a few of what we consider to be some of the most useful built-in apps. Um, and like I said, recommended some new apps to download as well. Um, it will really take you time to figure out um, which of the built-in apps work for you, um, which apps you would like there to be better ones of. Um, it, it, it's just a matter of time and practice and, and getting to know your iPad um, and know what's important to you. Um, with using your iPad as well. So I'm gonna demonstrate um, installing apps, um, deleting apps, and moving apps around as well. Um, so first, I'm gonna demo installing a new app. So one of the built-in apps uh, that I believe you can't delete, and for good reason, is called the App Store sort of in the, the right of my screen, and it's the blue square with the white A on it. So anytime I wanna download a new app, I would tap on that App Store icon. And then um, I already know the app I wanna download. So it's, it's tough to find. I wish they made it a little bit easier, but it's, it's at the very bottom right there. There's a magnifying glass that says search. So it kind of takes a little bit while, a little bit of time to find on this busy screen. Um, so I've opened the App Store and I'll just tap search on the bottom right. And um, let's say I've decided that I want to download um, Spotify uh, because I want to be able to listen to music. So at the top there where it says search, I'm gonna tap underneath and my keyboard comes up and then I'm gonna start typing in Spotify. And then I can see it there. It's, it's a little cluttered, the app store I find. Um, I wish it was a little more streamlined. Part of that is because they have ads. So the first result is for Spotify, and you can see it really small there. It says add in this faded blue. Um, and then next to it, it also says Spotify. And it's, it's the same app, it's just that one is the ad version and one is the search results version. They're both the same. Um, yeah, like I said, I find it confusing and cluttered. Um, generally, I don't like to click on ads, even though I know this is gonna work, but still, I'm gonna click on the non-add one on the right. And the way that I would download it is where it says get in all caps in blue. Then I, I would tap on that to start downloading it. And I can tell whether an app is free or not 
because um, it will say get or it will say a dollar amount. So I'm just gonna go back and show you, I'm gonna click the X up top next to where it says Spotify. And here, oh, I thought it, oh, here we go, yeah. So under my suggested apps, just to show you as an example, um, all of these apps say get next to them, except for Knots 3D. Knots 3D says $6.99. So all of the ones that say get, that means that they are all free to download. So it's not gonna charge me money. If I click on one that says a price like that Knots 3D where it says $6.99, then I'm going to be charged $6.99 to purchase that app. A common thing you'll see too, it's very, very small. Maybe I'll see if I can, I was hoping I could zoom in a little bit, but um, under some of them like Star Chart and Beach Body On Demand, I can see it says Get, and underneath it says In-App Purchases. So you'll see this also for, I'm gonna go back to Spotify as an example. So Spotify is also a one where it says get and then underneath it says in-app purchases. So I can download Spotify for free. And then I would just click on install. At this point, it might ask you um, to log in or authorize by entering in your Apple ID and password. It, it depends on your settings and, and how you have things set up. Or you might be asked to approve the installation using your passcode or your touch or your face ID. Um, so here, now it's finished downloading and it says open. Um, I'm just gonna press the home button so I can show you. So I can either click on open to have it open up or I can again click on our old friend, the home button. And it's not on the first page. I have a few pages of apps, as you can see. And there is Spotify there, the green and black app next to the homepage, West Vancouver Memorial Library. So Spotify as an example is when the app is free, I was not charged anything. Um, but the in-app purchases refers to um, buying a paid membership or paying for a feature once you're in the free version of the app. So as a personal example, on my iPhone, I have Spotify and I downloaded the app for free, but I also decided that I want to pay $9.99 a month um, for the premium version of, of Spotify. The free version of Spotify, um, you, aren't, you can't skip songs. Uh, it also has ads every few songs that you have to listen to. So I decided it was worth it for me to pay $9.99 a month so that I can you know, skip forward through songs, I can, um, you know, do all, all of these features that I don't have to think about. Um, you know, I listen to music enough that that's just kind of worth it for me. So it's just personal preference, but that's what an in-app purchase means. So that is downloading a new app. Um, now what I want to show you is, you know, you'll see my first page on my home page is this page here that we've mostly been going off of. If I swipe to the left, you'll see I have all these other pages of apps as well. So I've just downloaded Spotify. I know I'm going to use Spotify enough that I want to put it on the first page of my iPad. So the way that I can then move that, what I'll do is I will place my finger on Spotify and I'm going to hold it. I'm just going to keep holding it. And then all of the apps like sort of start to wiggle. <laughs> And once they're wiggling, that means you can move them or delete them. So my apps are wiggling. I can then put my finger on Spotify and I can drag it and I can keep dragging it, keep dragging it and then let it go. And then I can go ahead and press the home button or it'll automatically time out too. And then there it is there, Spotify is on my first page on my homepage. Um, so it's where I want it to be. Now you might have noticed when we held down a couple things. When I hold down, um, this option comes up. I'll just try to hold it again so you can see. Um, edit home screen, share app, or delete app. So I could click on edit home screen. That will also make the apps sort of wiggle. 
I prefer to just hold it and keep holding it. I find that's easier. So if I keep holding, it's just going to automatically go that way. Um, and I can delete the app this way. Or once the apps are wiggling, you'll notice there's a little X on the top left of the ones that I can delete. So this also shows a good example. Um, photos, camera, an app store, settings, and clock down below, they don't have an X on them. So those are built-in apps that I cannot delete. Other ones like Spotify, I can delete those. So I'm gonna have to demo this again in a class tomorrow, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete Spotify. Um, so I'm gonna make those apps wiggle again, and then press on the X, and then press delete, and there we go. And just to let you know as well, when you delete an app, like let's say I've decided I'm gonna delete Instagram off my iPad, that's not deleting my account. It's just deleting the app on the iPad. I'm still going to have an Instagram account. Same like anytime I you know, post from Instagram on my iPad or make any changes to my settings within Instagram on my iPad, those will be reflected everywhere. You know, it's the same account that I'm using. Like an, an app is just one way to access my account. So like I said, if I delete Instagram, um, you know, let's say I have the Gmail app. If I delete the Gmail app, I'm not deleting my account. I'm just deleting that way of accessing my account. That's it. So if you've deleted an app, it's totally not a big deal. If you've deleted an app, you would just go to the app store again download it again and log in and then everything is as it was it's all good you haven't made anything explode <laughs> um so i'll just quickly show you two uh I, I want to make sure that we have time to touch on storage um with uh with apps as well you can also make folders you can see that the first five options i have on my home screen here those are all folders so folder is um, you know one square that you're putting multiple apps into. So I have an internet browsers folder with my internet browsers. I have library resources with different library resource apps in there, and so forth. And so forth. So um, the way I would make a folder is I would again hold down on the apps. Now they're wiggling again. Let's say I want to have all of my photo apps um, or photo related apps in one folder. So they're all wiggling. So what I would do is take one of those photo apps. So in this case, I'm going to take photos. I'm going to put it directly on top of camera. And then there it's created a new folder and it's called it photography. I could click on the X and create a new title if I want. Let's call it photos. Done. And again, I, I don't have to click on the home button because there's this kind of like foggy background. I can tap my finger on there or I could click on the home button either way. So now I've got this photos folder and then I could add Instagram in there as well. So this is a good option. The thing I find that this is the best for and this is what I do on my iPhone. Um, for those built in apps that I don't find useful and I can't delete. Um, and there are unfortunately um, a lot of them I find, what I do is I make a folder where I put all of those apps and I put that on the second page of my iPhone. You can do this on your iPad as well. I put those on the like second or third page of my device so that I don't have to look at them and they're not cluttering my screen. So I can't delete them, but I can at least put them all in one folder um, so I don't have to worry about them. Let's say I don't want that photos app, um, photos folder anymore. I can just tap on the full, oops, tap once on the folder. And again, hold my finger down so they start wiggling. And then I would just drag it out of the folder. Um, so I'm gonna do that. Oops. You know, I've been using iPads and iPhones for years and <laughs> sometimes, um, you know, it's not always easy. Uh, to use use these things. Um, 
I'm going to move them back to where they all were. Yeah, I, I personally, I find creating folders to be one of the hardest things to physically do on an iPad to, to have that kind of dexterity. Um, so don't feel bad if it takes you a few tries to figure it out. You can also modify on the bottom there where it um, where you see the minus signs on the bottom you can choose which apps you have in there like let's say i'm going to take out the app store take out safari take out this one um and then i could add you know i could add the photos oops <laughs> I could add the photos app in there if i want okay Actually, it's really not wanting to cooperate with me. Oh, there we go. Okay. Like I said, I've been <laughs> using these for years and I still find it a little tricky. So um, yeah, practice might not make perfect, but it'll make it more comfortable. They'll make you feel less bad when it takes you a few tries. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna sort of really blaze through taking and organizing photos I linked to um, you know, the Apple support pages are really, really helpful. Once you know how to find them or know how to get to them, they, they really do a great job of taking you step by step through things. Um, so I've linked to some of those in the handout and I really recommend looking through them. Um, I'll just maybe go over quickly with the camera. You do have a lot of different options there. So I'll just move my video screen so we see everything. On the left there, you can slide your finger up and down to zoom in or zoom out. Maybe I'll show an example. Um, I'll show, oh, here's uh, my sewing machine on my desk. You can zoom in, zoom out. Okay. Um, the top up there that takes what's called live photos. Um, I find this feature kind of unhelpful. It, it takes a burst of three photos at once. Um, it's kind of an annoying, Feature I find I prefer having it off. I think most people do because if I'm going to take a photo, I just want to take one photo. Um, HDR is kind of a high definition thing. Um, I would just play with that and test it out. Um, see what you prefer with taking your photos. Um, there's the self timer app. Um, and then this is the, the app, the little camera with the arrows. Um, that's what I was talking about earlier with whether you're taking a selfie or not. Um, so for example, right now, again, like here's my sewing machine. So, um, oops, I have it the wrong way. So I'm, uh, I have the camera facing my sewing machine and I'm looking at the screen and seeing the sewing machine. So it's not on selfie mode right now. If I click that little camera with the arrows icon, then I'm in selfie mode. So anytime you're taking a photo, you should do it looking at the screen. And then you would just tap on this to determine whether you're taking a selfie or not. Um, and then the white circle, that's how you actually take the photo. And then you have these different options down here. You can do a time lapse photo uh, or a time lapse video, rather. So time lapse means that you're um, taking a very short or taking a very um, long in time video and it's condensing it into just a few seconds. You can do a regular photo. You can take a square shaped photo um, and a panorama. And if you have a newer iPad, there's going to be some other features on there too. So um, one of the newer ones is that you can take a slow motion video, which is the opposite of time lapse. It means you're taking um, a very short video, and then it's sort of stretching it um, out into slow motion. That's a little bit, um, a little bit about taking photos there. Um, and like I said, I uh, want to make sure to take a few moments to talk about storage. So um, there are two different types of storage with iPads. Um, the first one is your your storage on the actual ipad itself um, so to check how much you're storing on your ipad on the actual device we go back to our old friend the settings app and then i'd scroll down on the left and make sure i'm on general 
And then within general on the right there, oops, just gonna move my video. I would then click on iPad storage. And then this shows me how many gigs each app that I have downloaded is using. Um, generally, uh, apps that have anything to do with audio or video will be the ones that use the most, um, use the most storage. So GarageBand, um, that is the app that uses the most. That doesn't surprise me. Photos tends to be the one that uses the most for people. If you have Instagram, um, if you are an avid user of an app like RB Digital and you're checking out audiobooks or magazines, um, these take up quite a bit of storage. The way you can mitigate that, it's a good idea to um, it's a good idea to delete audio or video files when you're done with them, or return audiobooks, or make a point of returning magazines when you're finished, and that will free up a lot of space. Um, you can also choose to offload unused apps. So this is a feature that sort of deletes apps when you haven't used them for a while. It can also help declutter your screen too. Um, I happen to have an iPad that has quite a bit of storage on the actual iPad. I have 128 gigs. Um, my iPhone, it's one of the smaller iPhones in terms of storage. So um, I find the storage runs out quite a bit faster on my phone than on this iPad. So I'm not using too much storage on this iPad. I can see by this sort of colored chart up there and then it helpfully tells you what's using um, the most storage up there as well. So that's how you check the storage on the actual iPad itself. Your other, your second option for storage is to choose to store some things not on the iPad device itself, but within the cloud. The cloud is just a name for a big computer that lives somewhere else. Um, so information is never actually you know, stored in the ether. Um, it's always going to be stored on a computer of some kind, um, some sort of hard drive or device. So if you're um, storing things within iCloud, it means that you are using, um, using the internet to send information to store on one of Apple's computers somewhere far, far away. So to send things to the cloud and retrieve things from the cloud, you will need, to, um, will need to have access to the internet to be able to do that. Um, so using cloud storage is kind of like using a virtual storage locker. Um, with iPads, you automatically get five gigs of free storage in iCloud. I believe that's what it is. Um, and to set up information to be stored in iCloud, you would, again, go to your settings app, but instead of going to general, so you go to settings, and then I would tap where my name is. So in this case, West Van Library. It might prompt you for your password. Um, and then from there, I would click on iCloud. Oops, running on low battery there. We'll ignore that because we're almost done. So it's telling me, I've barely used any of my five gigs that I have available. So I could choose to store some more things um, on my iCloud. Um, generally photos is a good one to be able to store in there because that takes up a lot. Um, just as a note, five gigs is not a lot of storage in the grand scheme of things. Um, so for, like I said, with my iPhone personally, um, I find that um, the five gigs doesn't go very far and I don't have a lot of storage on the actual device. So what I've chosen to do is to pay $1.29 every month. And that $1.29 every month gives me 50 gigabytes of iCloud storage. And I don't think I will ever even come close to going over that. Um, so that works really well for me personally. It's, it's kind of personal preference. Um, storing things in the cloud can also be good from a safety standpoint. So, you know, my photos are really important to me. If I lost my phone tomorrow or it broke or something, I could still go to iCloud.com and log in um, to iCloud.com from any computer or, or any sort of device with an internet browser and internet. And then I could access my photos from there. So even though, let's say, my phone get, gets destroyed, knock on wood, um, <laughs> then it's, it's totally okay. Um, and then I am able 
to, um, <clears throat> sorry, then I'm able to still access my photos and anything else I've decided to store in my iCloud from there. Um, so that's storage in a nutshell. Um, I've also done some other links in the handout to um, other privacy and security settings you might want to think about. Um, also a page on keyboard tips and tricks. Um, and like I said, a little bit more on photos as well. Um, I'm just going to stop stop sharing here. Um, hi again. Um, and then just go back to sharing up, up here. Okay. Um, so yeah, it looks like we've gone through all of our time, I think even maybe a few minutes over. Um, so between um, this lesson, this video, and the handout paired together, I'm hoping that you'll be able to make changes um, and make things work that the way you want them to and, and make your iPad more comfortable and safe and secure, or maybe this will help you with determining whether an iPad is right for you or not. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in today. Again, my name is Rebecca. Um, please don't hesitate to contact us with any questions or for any help. And um, hopefully we will virtually or, or see you soon in some way. Bye for now.